Hey guys, what is happening? It's Travis. I'm here with a different series from the Homebrew Journey series that sort of serves as a, a primer, if you will. What we're going to do in this series is we are going to learn C. Uh, this is designed to be an introductory course, so basically the only thing you need to know how to do in this course is how to install programs, how to Google things if you run into problems, because as a software developer, that is the single most important thing you'll ever need to know, is how to Google things. And um, basically that's it, right? We're going to explain how this works from the ground up and how the language is used, what it's used for, and so forth. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the first question that a lot of you are probably going to have is why C? Why not C++? Why not another language, right? Why are we choosing C? First and foremost, C is available on almost every single platform available out there, right? On your desktop OSs, it's Windows, uh, Linux, Mac, all the others that are out there as well. Um, on mobile, you have your iOS, your Android. Uh, of course, your game consoles, they also support C. So uh, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, they all support C. Uh, and C++. Pretty much anything that supports C++ is going to support C. So C is a much simpler, you can think of it almost as a simpler version of C++, right? Um, it's almost a, a sort of subset of C++. So C has been around a very long time. It's had all the bugs and kinks worked out of it for the most part, right? It's been around since I think it was uh, 1972, 1973, something like that. So C has been around better part of 50 years, which is pretty amazing that it's still around, right? But it's still around for a reason, right? And those reasons, uh, several reasons, to be completely honest, is it's raw power that it gives you. Uh, it's, it's very close to the metal programming. Um, it gives you raw power and speed and a lot of control over the way things are written, right? And a lot of modern languages don't give you those things. They don't give you the ability to manage memory how you want to manage memory. They don't um, give you as much control over types and the way that things are allocated and so forth, right? So um, it's it's very close to the hardware um, and that's one of the reasons for its, uh, for its popularity, right? Uh, especially in games, right? And I should mention that this series is going to be approaching C from a video game perspective, right? So um, everything that we're going to discuss here is going to be for video game development with that in mind at least. So aside from its raw power, its speed, its control um, that it gives you, right? It compiles directly to machine code, right? That the processor understands. And that is what gives it its raw speed, right? Because it doesn't have extra layers of stuff to go through in order to actually execute, right? When it compiles down, it becomes machine code into an executable that the processor actually understands, right? And so that is the primary thing that can give uh, all the performance uh, that you get out of C. Of course, that also does mean that it makes it a lot easier to shoot yourself in the foot. And C and C++ are very infamous for that, but uh, I assure you as the series continues, uh, I will point things out to you guys to hopefully keep you from doing those things, right? So anyway, I sort of briefly touched on this before, but why C, why not C++, right? And Primarily, C is a much simpler language, right? C++ is not a simple language. There is a lot to it. There's a lot of complexities, especially in the uh, latest, greatest versions of it, right? And we don't want those complexities, right? We're we're wanting a, a simple language to develop with, with here, right? It's not to say that we won't ever do C++. I'm sure we'll do C++ at some point, um, but it's not something that I'm personally interested in jumping into right now. Um, I've actually moved away from C++ towards C for um, those reasons of complexity, right? And so, um, at least for right now, we are not going to be doing C++, right? We're going to be doing C because it's a much simpler language. I know some of you out there are probably asking, well, why aren't we using Java or why aren't we using C Sharp, right? It takes away a lot of those uh, complexities that you have in using lower level languages like C or C++. And that's true. Um, however, it comes at a cost, right? Because languages like Java and C Sharp run in what's called a virtual machine, right? Which means that their code actually isn't compiled until runtime, right? And what that means also is that it has a extra layer of sort of, you can think of it as another layer of translation that that code has got to go through before it actually becomes machine code to be executed by the processor, right? There's a whole bunch of extra stuff in the way. And additionally, you do not have the 
uh, the raw control over memory like you do in C or C++, right? And that in game development is a super important thing, right? Your regular desktop application, some might argue it's not as important, but in games, it is absolutely critical that you have as much control over the way that things get allocated or more importantly, don't get allocated until you're absolutely ready for that to happen, right? You need that, that power and that control. And we'll get into some examples in this series as to why. All right, um, the other thing I wanna mention on that note is while those languages are not as fast as properly written C, it is entirely possible, as I mentioned earlier, to shoot yourself in the foot with C, right? And poorly written C can actually wind up being much, much, much slower than Java or C Sharp. So we are going to avoid poorly written C, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it the right way from the ground up so that we don't run into those problems, right? Uh, because I know a lot of the guys out there that are proponents of the uh, Java and C Sharp languages will say, oh, it's just as fast as, as C or C++. It's not if the C or C++ is written properly. Cool, so just a quick uh, overview of what this series is going to cover, right? We're gonna start with the basic things. So we're actually gonna start off with how C works, right? How it's, uh, how it's compiled, right? That whole process that it goes through, how you take the files uh, that contain the core, the text files that contain the, the code in it, and uh, how that, the process that that goes through to actually become an executable, right? We're gonna cover all those things. And then after that, we're actually going to get into the language specifics, right? We're gonna, we're gonna start with things like variables and types, uh, branching, loops, functions, uh, and then we'll get into things like structures. And uh, eventually we'll move on to a little bit, um, slightly more advanced things, uh, such as pointers. I know that seems to trip a lot of people up until they actually wrap their head around it. And I promise you, it's not that complicated. Um, so we are gonna break all those things down as this series continues. So with all that said, what do we need to do to get started, right? In terms of what we're actually gonna need to get started, I'm going to put that into the next video, right? Uh, because I actually wanna show you guys how to get your, your environment set up to actually write C code. So this is just meant to be an intro to C and what we're gonna be doing uh, in this series. And next time I will go ahead and show you guys how to get set up so that you can actually write C on your machine. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and go ahead and hit that little bell so that you get notifications when new videos pop up, whether it be this series or the Homebrew Journey series, right? All right, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.